The next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 3336 in the name of Stuart Mac uh, 33, I meant my glasses on. 3336, it is indeed. In the name of Stuart Macmillan on Barnardo's Scotland Nurture Week, this debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I'd ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Stuart Macmillan to open the debate. Mr Macmillan, seven minutes or thereabouts, please. Thank you very much, uh, presiding officer. And at the outset, I'd like to thank uh, all the members who have signed uh, the motion to have this debate. And also like to thank the members who have stayed back uh, to either take part in the debate or listen uh, to what's uh, going to be said. Um, obviously, next week uh, is the uh, Bernardo's uh, Scotland Nurture Week. Uh, obviously, with Parliament being in recess, uh, I'm glad that we've actually got the chance to debate it uh, today. And I'd like to thank the, uh, thank the Whips for allowing that to happen. Uh, for any parent, a child is a responsibility and a challenge. And it's very easy to actually feel swamped uh, by both. But for those parents whose children require extra attention or who may have their own difficult personal issues to deal with, these day-to-day -day challenges can certainly multiply hugely. Uh, in my uh, Greenock and Inverclyde constituency, uh, Bernardo's are part of the Nurture Group Network, which is, uh, which is vital to child development and well-being. And actually, just in December of last year, I put forward a, a motion uh, which was signed by quite a number of uh, members too. That, that was indicating, we're highlighting uh, the additional funding that Bernardo's had managed to, uh, to receive to actually help with uh, Inverclyde pupils. Uh, this network uh, recognises the importance of nurture in schools, uh, so school settings, and also to train practitioners across Scotland in running nurture groups. Reaching out to both parents and children uh, is Bernardo's Greenock-based nurture service, which offers advice, information, expertise, and crucially, the support that can ensure the young people who come through its doors and get the best possible start in life and enjoy the best possible future uh, as a result. Nurture groups are a psychologist-designed, teacher-led intervention for disengaged and troubled children, which removes behavioural barriers to engagement and attainment in schools through recreating missing or distorted early attachments. Nurturing approaches are based on the recognition that the, the factors which lead to many young children failing to reach developmental milestones can be addressed by helping parents and those working with children to take relatively simple measures uh, to improve attachment and thus the child's development. It's also uh, a powerhouse of work to improve families' futures, offering a range of group uh, and one-to-one -one service focus, services focused on building attachment uh, relationships in the critical early years. Uh, babies are born with 25% of their brains developed, but by the age of three, that figure has leapt up to 80%. Now, the principles of early support are well established. Children need warm, attentive and stimulating parenting at this age to support their social, emotional and physical growth. It's benefits to society, breaking intergenerational cycles of potentially crime, alcohol and drug abuse and teenage pregnancy are widely recognised. Uh, Bernardo's uh, provide services uh, which take an attachment-based approach to working with the most vulnerable uh, and disadvantaged children and families across the country and these, in, these includes uh, including working in nurseries, primary schools and early stages of secondary school. But crucially, this also includes the work with families before the school gates to ensure that children arrive at the school gates ready to learn. In Inverclyde, uh, where levels of poverty, unemployment and drug and alcohol misuse are sadly uh, above the national average, uh, Bernardo's works with mothers-to-be as well as parents of newborns, toddlers and children aged 5 to 12, often uh, using respected programmes. Uh, there are also services targeted at young parents aged between 14 and 25 who may feel removed from accessing mainstream services. Now, this approach helps parents build strong and healthy relationships with their children and improves educational attainment and life chances for whole families. As well as offering one-to-one -one support, Bernardo's Nurture uh, Service offers participants uh, the chance to increase their social networks by meeting other parents and for many young parents uh, facing the problems of isolation this can be vital. Uh, there are now more than 300 nurture groups in schools across Scotland. That's a ratio of around one to every eight schools. Now, Bernardo's work in Inverclyde and across other local authority areas to help build the capacity of the early years in teaching work the workforce to take a nurturing attachment based approach to their work with children and parents. Now, nurture children uh, are carefully uh, selected using the Boxall Profile, uh, an online resource that allows teachers 
uh, to develop an accurate understanding of children's emotional and behavioural difficulties and to plan effective interventions and support activities. Once in the group, a nurturing philosophy uh, rooted in attachment theory is used uh, to ensure that children with social, uh, sorry, with social, emotional or behavioural difficulties are provided with the early nurturing experiences that are vital to learning. Now make no mistake, presiding officer, nurture groups can turn children's lives around. In the autumn uh, of last year, Queen's University of Belfast published an independent evaluation of the Nurture Signature Schools programme in Northern Ireland. This is a government funded uh, pilot where nurture groups were set up in 20 schools and continued in a further 10 and thoroughly evaluated the, the, for outcomes and cost effectiveness. Now, the two year evaluation found that across the 30 nurture groups, children made consistently large improvements in social, emotional, and behavioural development. It also found that uh, there was evidence that greater progress was being made by those attending on a full-time basis, looked after children, and those not eligible for free school meals. In Inverclyde, Bernardo's have adapted the original wellbeing outcomes used in the Getting It Right for Every Child approach to suit their aims. They have sought uh, to ensure that every child, citizen and community will be safe, healthy, achieving, nurtured, active, respected and responsible. A central part of the Bernardo service is to stress the importance of attentive and stimulating parenting. Uh, it does this through initiatives such as the Triple P, that's a positive parenting programme, the Five to Thrive, which encourages bonding and offers five cues to help with the emotional development of babies and also Mellow Parenting, a programme aimed at vulnerable and hard to reach parents. This is an empowering experience for both parents and children. In conclusion, uh, presiding officer, Bernardo's has helped children and their families for over 150 years. It's central to their aims is a belief that every child, every child deserves the best start in life, regardless of their gender, their race, their disability, or their behaviour. They understand that being a parent or a carer can be hard work. Uh, Bernardo's Children's Centres provide a fun, safe haven where mums, dads, parents-to-be, carers and children can learn, develop and spend quality time in a welcoming and supportive environment. Now, I've been to, to see uh, the facility that they've got uh, in Greenock uh, and, uh, and I cannot praise it enough. It is an outstanding facility. Now, I'm sure that I speak for everyone in the chamber uh, that when I say that, that, that we all value the work undertaken by Bernardo's in supporting children and families, uh, and certainly in my constituent community in Inverclyde, as well as across the country. But I've got two points uh, just uh, for the Minister, two asks, uh, Minister. Uh, firstly, uh, can the Scottish Government look favourably on investing in nurture groups across Scotland? And secondly, uh, there is a belief that all schools should use the, the Boxall profile uh, to better un understand and support the social, behavioural and emotional needs of their children. Uh, can the Minister, I'd uh, be grateful if the Minister could actually give this some consideration to be utilised in all of our schools in Scotland. Thank you very much. very much, Ms McMillan. I now call Ruth McGuire to be followed by Alec Ander Alexander Stewart. Okay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, and I thank, thank you also to my colleague Stuart McMillan for bringing the important topic of nurture to the Chamber today. I'm particularly pleased to have the opportunity to speak today having recently visited um, Blacklands Primary and Co-Winning Academy in my own constituency and having seen for myself the positive and tangible effects of nurture groups on attainment and inclusion. Um, in Blacklands there was a, a particularly touching moment when one wee boy alerted a teacher to the fact that one of his friends had done something well and they had quite a cute well done song um, and it's a simple thing but that in a nutshell is, is kind of what nurture is about it's about having a space where we can support children to develop healthy and supportive relationships and attachments making them feel valued by others and confident in themselves and teaching them how to communicate constructively and positively. In all of this, it's about equipping them with the emotional and mental resilience to deal with the challenges of life, whether the little everyday ones or the much bigger and traumatic ones. Nurturing healthy, um, emotionally healthy and resilient children paves the way for future generations of healthy and resilient adults. 
These are really our skills for life. Not only is this of immeasurable benefit to the individual, leading um, to a healthier and happier life, but it's of benefit to all of us, with evidence suggesting that nurture groups can work to reduce crime and health problems in wider society. And at the immediate school level, the positive impact that nurture groups have on attainment and thus a closing, closing the attainment gap um, shouldn't be overstated, or cannot be overstated, I should say. Um, with vulnerable or disadvantaged children, the first challenge, um, as Stuart McMillan said, is often ensuring that children get to school in the first place and are ready and willing to learn when they do. Nurture groups make a huge difference um, to all of these points, resulting in improved attendance and reduced exclusions, improved behaviour and in positive attachments to teachers and to the schools. When it comes to attainment itself, the results are, are no less impressive, with trials showing that children attending nurture groups demonstrate significant gains in academic achievement, including in metacognition skills, language and literacy. There's no doubt that poverty and income inequality play serious roles in educational inequality, but income is not the only factor. More important in a child's life than how much money their family has is stability, love, security and support. Nurture groups are founded on this recognition to ensuring that children get the right support at the right time from the right people and have equal opportunity to engage with learning whatever's going on in their life that's out with their control. In this, the Nurture Group approach dovetails with the GERFEC approach of the Scottish Government, and I'm very pleased that Scotland has the best ratio of Nurture Groups to schools in the UK at 8 to 3, and that the majority of local authority-funded Nurture Groups in the UK are actually in Scotland. Um, importantly, Nurture Groups allow children to remain part of their mainstream class and work in both primary and secondary school settings. They're eminently sensible and feasible, um, and, and a good way of tackling some of the most complex issues um, faced by children at a very early stage and in a meaningful and sustainable manner. And I see I've run out of time, so I'll, I'll finish on that note. Thank you. Thank you very much. Alexander Stewart, followed by Monica Lynn. And Mr Stewart, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I remind the Chamber that I am a serving councillor on Perth and Canals Council and refer members to my register of interests? May I begin, Deputy President Officer, by congratulating Stuart McMillan on securing this debate, welcoming Bernardo's Scotland's Nurture Week, which will take place next week. The importance of nurture in the development of children is one of those rare things that I think all of us in this chamber can broadly agree with, and that uh, transcends the political divide, Deputy Presiding Officer. It is absolutely essential that children in Scotland grow up in an environment in which they are cared for, in which they are supported and in which they feel crucially feel safe. These are instances where we should all manage to support. Now, many of us here look at the opportunity of going forward, uh, and it's vital to the children's development that they have ability to learn. We regularly debate the different ways in which we can close the attainment gap uh, and the Scottish education system is, is, is moving in one way or the other, but we primarily focus on the curriculum and standard of teaching. Whilst these are, of course, extremely important, many children are at a significant disadvantage relative to their peers before they even reach the school gate. Many of these children who have come from a disadvantaged background and they have educational attainment is an area that they struggle at. Many of them uh, have to manage outside the school uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And the difference of living in an environment with drug, alcohol or domestic abuse and stressful situations at home can severely disrupt a child's education. Deputy Presiding Officer, I have seen firsthand as a councillor on Perth and Canos Council the impact that Bernardo Scotland have had on lives of these youngsters. And I congratulate and pay tribute to them for the work they do. Their efforts are to be rewarded and congratulated. This work done in Bernardo Scotland to tackle these issues by providing services at work and to the principle of positive attachment within the most vulnerable families helps to ensure that when the children arrive at school, they feel safe and not just, importantly, they are ready to learn. 
because that's the problem situation we are facing uh, in this situation, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, uh, that the individuals who get to school, because of the situation they find themselves in, because of the background they're coming from, that they have a difficulty at engaging at that level. Uh, and we have to make sure that's the case. And Barnardos are picking up that. And as I said, uh, I, I very much support the work that they're doing. It is also clear that the poor attachment in early years of a life uh, is not always uh, you know, what, what, what manages a child and the results that they can get and the risks that they have uh, of, of potential mental health problems as they go forward. And we're seeing more and more of that, Deputy Presiding Officer. We must look at, to tackle the root causes of the problem as well as the methods of treating these youngsters who have got complex issues and as they experience more situations in their life, they become even more uh, complex as they move forward. And the nurturing approach promoted by Bernardo's is the best way for trying to manage that situation in, in making them feel secure, in making them feel safe and giving them the opportunity and working with their families and working with the school uh, to ensure that happens. The growing number of children who are affected by mental health issues is, of course, very concerning and makes it all the more important to foster stable and nurturing environments at an early age. Strengthening the emotional resilience of children to face anxiety, stress and mental health issues is essentially important as we move forward. And in concluding, Deputy Presiding Officer, I am very happy to support the efforts of Bernardo Scotland ahead of the week's series of events and activities in supporting both the emotional well-being and the mental health of these children as they go forward. And thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you very much. I call Monica Lennon to be followed by David Torrance. Ms Lennon, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to begin by thanking Stuart McMillan for bringing this motion to Parliament today and for highlighting the very important work that Bernardos do in improving childhood development in Inverclyde and in other areas across the country. I'd also like to thank Bernardo Scotland for their insightful briefing ahead of today's debate, which highlights many of the important issues. They are a great uh, support to all of the MSPs in the Chamber. We can all agree that the importance of Nurture in early childhood development is vital and Nurture Week is a great way to showcase the best practice currently being exercised by Bernardos in some parts of the country. And I think therefore it's also a good time to reflect on how we can use this knowledge of best practice Nurture principles, which all the research tells us absolutely works in terms of achieving positive outcomes for children and consider how we can embed this approach throughout our early years provision and education systems across the country. In terms of closing the attainment gap, we know that early intervention is absolutely crucial. Those children who face the most difficult beginnings in life, navigating family situations marked by poverty, alcohol and drug abuse, violence in the home, and those who may find themselves in care as a result of these issues, are most likely to exhibit signs of challenging behaviour and suffer from inequity in attainment at school. The damaging effects of early unmet attachment needs can therefore have a, a lifelong impact on a child's prospects. Given the Scottish Government's commitment to closing the attainment gap in education as its top priority in this Parliament, more focus and attention needs to be given to adopting attachment and nurture-based approaches in early years. I hope, therefore, to see an acknowledgement of this in the forthcoming mental health strategy, which I hope will reflect the importance of embedding nurture and attachment in the early years of a child's life in order to prevent problems in mental health later down the line, some of which we heard about in the earlier First Minister's question session. Perhaps that's something the Minister could elaborate on in closing. I also hope the forthcoming mental health strategy will reflect a commitment to working across portfolio areas. It's vital that those in health, education and the third sector are working closely together to tackle the complex issues of well-being and mental health and the undeniable impact this has on other areas of life. With this in mind, I think it's also worth drawing attention to the recent publication of a report by the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health into the state of child health in 2017, which includes several recommendations for action in Scotland. In particular, the report highlights that one in 10 children starting school experience social, emotional or behavioural difficulties. And as many as five children in every class have some form of additional support needs, all of which puts pressure on other services. This shows just how important it is that we start to embed the practice of nurture throughout our education system from the very earliest stages. Not only will this ensure that professionals are equipped to support children who need extra support, 
But this early investment and prevention will have a long-term positive impact on the need for using services in later life. The report highlights that half of mental health problems start before the age of 14 and three quarters before the age of 24, underlying the importance of early intervention. So I hope the government will give consideration to the recommendations in that report in due consideration. In closing, because I realise time is short in these debates, I think that the key theme of today's debate is about the deserved recognition of the great work in developing attachment and nurture in some parts of the country. And there's also the, the wider issue of how we can further develop this practice and mainstream it throughout our education system. As Stuart McMillan's motion states, this is a principle that all parties get, can get behind. And, and I liked the, the, the mention in Ruth Maguire's speech about the Well Done song. Perhaps we can all uh, come up with some way to, to celebrate each other when we do sort of work together in a, in a positive way. And by working across the chamber and with third sector groups such as Bernardo's and the Nurture Group Network, we can hopefully see an expansion of this approach and I hope we're able to see real progress in this area during the lifetime of this parliament. Thank you very much. Can I just clarify the well done song? No, we didn't sing it just as well, but there we are, because I don't think it's parliamentary, but there we are. Uh, can I now call Jeremy Balfour to be followed by, now have I got this right? I've gone and drifted. No, it's David Torrance. Sorry, I drifted thinking about the song. David Torrance to be followed by Jeremy Balfour. Mr. Torrance. Thank you, President Officer. <laughs> I'd like to thank Stuart McMillan for bringing this motion to the Chamber this afternoon to welcome Bernard of Scotland's Nurture Week. I'd also like to make a special thank you to Gordon MacDonald for the loan of his glasses so he could actually see my speech just now. <laughs> As a father of two, I would like to stress the importance of building a supportive and long-lasting relationship with my children, a relationship that has lasted throughout their childhood and is just beginning to touch their young adult lives. However, as any parent will know, the first few years of a child's life are crucial for their emotional, social, psychological, neurological and physical development. To support children with insecure attachments, all members of the Scottish Parliament should encourage leaders and players in education to promote a nurturing approach to help create strong attachments to foundations of children's positive emotional development. Key to this mantra is Bernardo Scotland. Scotland's largest children's charity, who provide more than 130 local services throughout Scotland and work with over 26,500 vulnerable children and young people and their families. They provide help with issues such as attachment and early development, supporting parents in the community and providing guidance and advice on a case-by-case -case basis. This individualised service is a distinguished feature of Bernardo Scotland. The charity has successfully developed a structure in which staff can acknowledge and respond to children's young people and families based on their individual circumstances, needs and background, rather on their age, gender, class or status. I'm sure my fellow MSPs will agree with me that closing the poverty-related attainment gap, especially when working with young and vulnerable children, is certainly a priority. Bernardo Scotland has taken a unique approach to health and well-being in order to ensure that children living in the most disadvantaged areas are receiving as much attention to literacy numeracy and health and well-being. Support services in Fife are an, ex an ex excellent example of how Bernardo Scotland individualises their support on a case-by-case -case basis, especially working with other support groups such as the Fife Advocacy Forum, Fife Council, NHS Fife and Bernardo's Child and Family Support Service, which has been providing services to children and families in need for over a decade. This Fife-based service currently has eight strands of service, including children's rights, intensive family support, assessment of parent capacity, family careers, family health, a nurture hub, and substance abuse services. I'd like to stress that these services are often not a one-off appointment, and families are encouraged to follow up with staff for up to a year after their initial meeting. This ensures that services Bernardo can offer make a long-lasting impact on communities. I have the confidence that Bernardo Scotland Nurture Week will bring awareness not only to the children and young people that are suffering, but crucially to parents who often take an extremely emotional and physical role in dealing with the day-to-day -day struggles of their children in need. Bernardo's Nurture Service not only offers a space for children to express themselves, but also a space for parents of vulnerable children to meet and socialise, essentially creating ad hoc support networks. This domino effect is what Bernardo Scotland is essentially, essentially aiming for creating and fostering support and extending that support in everyday life, not just under the care of compassionate staff and volunteers. 
Crucially, getting it right for every child brings all these initiatives together. Nurturing them in Clyde has set a great example for the rest of the country by putting children at the centre of the local community. Inver Clyde has adapted getting it right for every child to suit their needs. And I call on every constituency to do the same by working and consulting with her council services and leaders of community development planning, as well as a range of stakeholders who can contribute to well-being outcomes. In conclusion, presiding officer, I would once again like to thank Stuart Mellon for securing this important debate and commend Barbados for an invaluable contribution to Scotland's young people and families. Thank you very much, Mr Torrance. I call Jeremy Balford, be followed by Fulton McGregor, be the last speaker in the open debate. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And again, like others, can I thank Stuart McMillan for bringing this debate and for the opportunity to uh, talk about this important subject. I'm sure, as has already been said, we all agree nurturing children within our society and within our country is so important. It can create positive attachments, help the child mature, learn and thrive. And for parents, it is often hard to nurture children, particularly those who are younger. Uh, I speak um, from experience as a, a father of twins who have just got to nearly six years old. And parents, wherever they come from, often do need help. It's too easy for society and for even sometimes us as politicians to blame parents rather than support parents. And that is where I think Bernardo's and others can bring such valuable experience to help. As someone who is still very new to this parliament and still learning lots, what has uh, surprised me perhaps the most since coming to this place is the importance that a child learns from zero to three even before we start nursery or school. Often, as we've heard from other speakers, a, a child will nurture, will grow in those formative years. And what happens between zero and three has a knock-on effect into not only primary school, but secondary and later into society. And so we need to support vulnerable families, we need to support children who have extra needs in regard to being able to nurture and to grow, so that they will then grow not only in the younger years, but in years to come. I welcome the work of Bernardo's and other organisations in the help that they can give many families within our community. Because if we get this right, and we get this right for every child, we will see less children coming forward with mental health issues. We will see the attainment gap lessen. We will see families stronger within our society. And whichever political party uh, we are, that is what we all want to see in Scotland. So I welcome this debate and I wish uh, Bernardo as well uh, next week I hope their campaign goes beyond these four wars and goes into the whole of our society and local authorities and families appreciate and realise a bit more what they can offer as we seek to nurture our children. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you very much. Fulton McGregor. <laughs> Lack of lunch, I think, Minister. <laughs> Fulton McGregor, thank you very much. I'm sorry to disappoint everybody, I've still got one more to go. <laughs> uh, thank you, President Officer, and thanks to Stuart McMillan for bringing this debate to the Chamber. Um, and just like other speakers, I'm delighted to be able to participate in this Member's debate uh, regarding Bernardo's Scotland Nurture campaign. And like Jeremy Balfour said uh, before me there, um, I think that Bernardo's is a fantastic organisation and I wish them well with the upcoming campaign. Um, also, like others have said, I think you know most points uh, have been covered, and it's a very consensual debate. And I would uh, also stress that I uh, recognise the importance of nurturing interventions uh, for children and young people, and it's particularly relevant, uh, as as we've heard, uh, to children who may be facing inequity in terms of attainment, and uh, are those who are at the greatest uh, face the greatest challenges. And the constituency that I represent, poverty is uh, fairly prevalent, and 
this can understandably uh, have an impact on childhood experiences and the direction that they may be taken. You know, I, I'm thinking um, even specifically to the review of the looked after and accommodated uh, young people that um, the, the Scottish Government has announced, and I think that you know this this all uh, ties in together um, quite nicely. Um, within my own area, I mentioned uh, my constituency there, and within my own area there is uh, nurture groups at St Monica's uh, and inclusion support across the constituency, and also great work done by North Lanarkshire Council in terms of community learning and development. And I know that a lot of parents in schools speak very highly of the support that they receive through these um, links. Last night I hosted an event uh, by Sam H in the garden lobby. Um, I felt that it went really well and it was in relation to mental health and working opportunities. Um, but it actually links, I feel, quite nicely into today's debate because when I was speaking to some of the people there at the event last night, there was a lot of talk about the, the mental health issues faced by young people uh, at, the mo at the present time uh, and the poor attachments and uh, the difficulties it can have for young people starting school if they've not if they've not developed um, the proper attachments and had the proper nurturing. And I was really pleased to hear uh, Monica's, Monica Lennon's question um, earlier to the First Minister. And I actually had a supplementary there, but um, Monica uh, actually covered the points that I wanted to come in on and um, allowed the First Minister to answer and give the direction that she and the government are, are going uh, and the, the ambitions that they have to, for young people uh, with mental health. The Nurture Group Network Annual Scottish Conference is actually, I'm pleased to announce, being held in my constituency at the Coatbridge campus of New College Lanarkshire. It's happening at the end of the month, and the theme is the teaching and learning for children with social, emotional and mental health issues. And I think it's fair to say that I think this is a great opportunity for promoting the work of Nurture Groups and demonstrates why such groups have had such a claim from teachers, parents, pupils, education professionals and others. And I, I, I'll just take the opportunity again. As I said, a lot of the points have been covered. Yeah, I think it's an area where everybody in the Parliament can put support behind. And thanks, Jim McMillan, again for bringing it to the Chamber. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr McGregor. Now, I call Aileen Campbell to wind up the Government Minister. Seven minutes or thereabouts. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Please forgive my, the premature nature of me rising to, to speak, but I think you had to put your teacher voice back on there to tell me uh, to, to sit down there. Um, I'd also like to thank Stuart McMillan uh, for raising this motion and for highlighting the fantastic work of Bernardo Scotland, which is being celebrated through their Nature Week. And I've appreciated, appreciated all contributions highlighting all the local work that's happening uh, right across uh, everybody's constituencies or indeed council uh, areas. Uh, good attachment, positive relationships, nurture, support, stability, love are all essential ingredients for a good and happy childhood that sets the strong foundations for later life. And Ruth Maguire uh, articulated the wider societal benefits that we all feel, whether that's injustice, the economy or the health service, when we do have that focus on the early years, showing why it is everyone's business to get this right. So that's why today I want to touch upon activities this government is doing in those important early years and throughout the child's life journey with a focus on nurture. And I do want to maybe just stress that eh, as well, because while we do have that focus on early years, we should never misunderstand the fact that early intervention and early years are different, that once a child is beyond those early years, we shouldn't think that we should never give up on that child and make sure that we can act early when we can and provide support to a, a child and young person whenever they need that help. But in terms of the early years, this starts, of course, in maternity services. And Stuart McMillan recognised the brain development that has occurred before a child is even born. And that's a point recognised and articulated very strongly by uh, Suzanne Ziedike in what she describes as the connected baby. And I would certainly recommend uh, to any member who is, is new to this, this parliament to certainly look at the work of Suzanne Ziedike uh, and, what she, uh, and how she articulates the importance of uh, attachment for all of our children. In January, we published the Best Start, our five-year forward plan for maternity and new care in Scotland. And this included a number of recommendations focused on providing family-centred, safe and compassionate care, which recognises the importance of attachment and bonding. 
post-birth skin-to-skin care is already very well established throughout Scotland and should continue to be promoted. Plus, women and babies should be kept together whenever possible to assist with bonding and attachment and to help support breastfeeding, which is also recognised as a positive proactive mechanism for supporting that important attachment. We are also, as a government, committed to supporting parents, giving a fair and equal start for every child. And it was good to hear some uh, of uh, our MSPs talking about the challenges that they have uh, as a parent uh, as well. So we'll continue to roll out uh, the rollout of the Family Nurse Partnership Programme to reach all eligible teenage mothers by the end of 2018. We'll also ensure that every newborn in Scotland receives a baby box, which includes essential items for a child's first weeks. This will include materials which promotes attachment to help parents prepare for the arrival of their wee one. Our national parenting strategy also highlights how we will help parents lay strong foundations for the loving, nurturing relationships that we all know are integral to children's well-being. Our well-established Play Talk Read campaign encourages parents and carers to incorporate playing, talking and reading into their daily routines. And it helps also drive home the importance of positive interactions with children from day one. But that doesn't just stop with parents. All staff working with children and young people play a crucial role in helping them to develop skills, positive mental health and to foster resilience. Our national practice guidance for an ambitious expansion of early learning and childcare, building the ambition, describes good work practice in creating caring and nurturing settings that allow well-being to flourish. This guidance also sets out the importance of attachment where the parent-child relationship is viewed as one of the most important factors in a child's development. These nurturing uh, approaches are especially vital for our looked after children. And that has been a point that was raised by Fulton McGregor, Monica Lennon, and I'm sure others as well throughout their contributions. Because uh, our looked after children currently demonstrate the poorest outcomes by comparison with their peers. And any of us in this chamber who are parents would never accept poor outcomes for our own children, and nor should we for those who have, that we have uh, a collective corporate parenting responsibility for. This government expects all corporate parents to work with young people and consider fully how they can fulfil their statutory obligations differently and more effectively. Our commitment to getting it right for every child is at the very heart of this and that all, we, all that we do uh, for our children and it's also at the very heart of our curriculum. To support the development and practice of nurturing approaches in our schools, Education Scotland has also developed two national professional learning resources. The first, nurturing approaches in the primary school explores attachment and nurture in the early years. The second, a whole school nurturing approach promotes school connectedness, resilience, and the development of social and emotional competences, all of which are key aspects of promoting mental wellbeing. And further discussions are also taking place to adapt this for use in early year settings. I also understand for Stuart McMillan that Education Scotland promote the Boxall profile uh, as a useful tool to be used as part of a child's plan. The Scottish Attainment Challenge has also prioritised improvements in health and wellbeing. We will allocate uh, 750 million during the course of this parliament through the Attainment Scotland Fund to tackle the poverty related attainment gap, targeting resources at the children, uh, schools and the communities most in need. And a significant proportion of the Scottish Attainment Challenge funding has focused on taking forward nurturing approaches and nurture groups. Again, I hope that provides some reassurance to Stuart McMillan in the two points that he raised. And we recognise the importance of nurturing approaches and addressing and overcoming the barriers that some children uh, experience in school. Barnardos, though, are at the very forefront of this work. They are involved with more families through the attainment challenge than through any other services in Cl Inverclyde. And this close partnership working has been effective in attracting and engaging more families who need a support, support in comparison to other services within the wider nurture service provision. In Inverclyde, 60 families are working with family support workers provided by Barnardos and funded through the Scottish Attainment Challenge. And since March of last year, 90 staff have been trained in Five to Thrive by Bernardo's. The programme in partnership with Inverclyde Council is an example that we want to encourage other schools and local authorities to follow. We greatly value uh, Barnardo's uh, contribution and that is why we support them with core funding as part of the Children, Young People and Families Early Intervention Fund. 
So again, presiding officer, I want to thank uh, Stuart McMillan, MSP, for, uh, for raising the motion and highlighting the important work of Bernardo's in embedding nurture approaches to services. Children only get one shot at childhood, and it's incumbent on us all to work together across professions, across disciplines, across portfolios, and across parties uh, to strive to do our very best to help them get it right. Thank you. That concludes the debate, and I suspend this meeting until 2.30.